corner kick is cleared back out to Miranda Gonzalez. It's an in looking for Penny Baker, but it's broken up. Look for Penny Baker, but that ball was right to number eight, Juliana Guida. Ball kicked back out to Shields for Tampa. Into Martin. She's defended. Back to Shields, who gets the ball over to Penny Baker. Penny Baker trying to uh, create some space. That's what the uh, Tampa really needs to do with Penny Baker and Russo. Just create that space and let them go one-on-one. It seems to have worked all year for, for the Spartans. Russo with the ball here. Headed in, trying to get something. Florida Southern playing back there. And a quick shot by Gonzalez is um, snatched by the goalkeeper, Rain uh, Mosley. Probably going to go down as a shot, but that one really was uh, right at the moccasin goalkeeper there. So she was playing that, playing that well. Tampa with an opportunity. Um, both teams have had some opportunities early on. Been a fairly limited in the opportunities here. That ball is kicked out of bounds by Hayward. We're going to have a corner kick by the Moccasins. Sonny, what do you think of uh, play so far this afternoon? Well, it looks like both teams are still trying to fill out each other's defense. And you said on Tampa, they have a shot, a couple shots there. Like you said, Gabby Russo and Amby Pennybaker will be important to get in open space alone as they create great speed for the Tampa Spartans on the outside. As we have the corner coming up here. Christy Lagoas on the corner. Played in there. It's headed out by Lauren Moore, but controlled by the Moccasins. Mets back to Lagoas. Lagoas guarded by Hayward, and Hayward's going to... Looks like that's going to be off Florida Southern. Tampa's going to get a goal kick here. By Fright Guard. So it is a... Wind over here blowing towards the Tampa goalie side. So we'll see if the wind has any effect on the game today and the corners. As we saw both corners taken so far today haven't been the best attempts. So we'll see if the wind has anything to do with that today. Wind's headed, it looks like, uh, maybe north to south, uh, towards the southwest a little bit maybe. Could alter shots a little bit. And a little bit of a... Definitely a little bit of a breeze here. As we'll have a corner here. Fans, we're going to have a, have a soccer doubleheader. This is one of two today for uh, these two teams, as the men's teams will do battle at 7 o'clock, uh, about 30 minutes after this game concludes. So estimated time will be about 7 o'clock, as Spartacus, the official mascot of UT, is on hand here. Lagoas kicks that ball in and has three Spartans there to stop it. And Russo clears that ball out. Florida Southern with control. Juliana Guido with the ball back to her goalkeeper, Mosley. She's going to set things back up for the mocks. Back over to Guida. Guida's going to attempt to uh, take that ball up the field as Penny Baker cuts her off. Well, their outlet pass is off the foot of Conti. Tampa's going to get possession. Candace Shields on the throw in here. Shields, a senior defender for the Spartans from Virginia Beach, Virginia. A veteran lineup here for the Spartans with um, some uh, some youth mixed in. A pair of uh, freshmen starting for Tampa in the field in uh, defenders Madison Cox and Miranda Gonzalez. Also a freshman goalkeeper, Caroline Freitgard. As the Moccasins have the ball here. Florida Southern has definitely enjoyed a, an excellent season thus far. Um, they were uh, definitely picked to finish uh, in the lower half of the standings in the Sunshine State Conference preseason poll. And uh, so far here, Santi, in this game, they've, uh, they've hung with Tampa and uh, maintained just as much possession as uh, the Spartans have. Yeah, they definitely have. They played so good. So far, they've been playing very well against the Spartan defense and offense. Help containing them. So we'll see if they're able to put this game together for all 90 minutes and if they're able to sustain the uh, Spartans' attack. We're 10 minutes in. Uh, Florida Southern definitely showed that they were here to play and that they're uh, 
they're a player this season when they handed Barry a four to one uh, loss uh, on Saturday. Buccaneers yeah. nationally ranked and uh, definitely um, there's a lot of shock with that, but it just shows third year head coach uh, Brittany Jones has done an excellent job and uh, has continue uh, to build this program here back up to where it has been. Tampa with the ball here. Yeah, that Barry game was definitely a big win for Florida Southern as Barry was picked to finish second in the conference, just one point behind Rollins. And obviously that win can carry big momentum for the rest of the year for the Mox. And they are led by sophomore Aubrey Riggins. She's the two-time conference offensive player of the week. And she has four goals and an assist on the year for nine total points. So we'll see how the Spartans defense adjusts to Riggins. Little back and forth action here in the in the middle of the field here is um both teams appear to be pretty uh well set defensively. Um playing the ball there. Um may not be a lot of opportunities today. That why that's why it's uh important to uh cash in and convert those uh opportunities as they're gonna be few and far between here for both teams as Russo with the ball. Over here looking for Ward. And picked off by Florida Southern. Had the ball in the middle of the field here with Rainbow. Over to Metz. Metz up the field, and that one is right to Hayward. She must have thought she had a teammate there or um, misplayed that one. CeCe Gonzalez here turns the corner. She's got Martin to the left, Penny Baker to the right, and it's picked off by Guida. So the Moccasins now with the ball, and that's a bad pass there by the Moccasins. Going to be out of bounds. Tampa with the throw in here. Yeah, the Tampa defense playing very well here against the Mox. Limiting the Mox offensive possession. Seems like every time Florida Southern gets the ball from Tampa, it seems like Tampa just gets the ball right back. Penny Baker with a the control there. She turns. This is a dangerous situation for her, but uh, Southern's able to come out and stop that one. Anytime Amber Penny Baker gets the ball, uh, defense definitely needs to be on guard. She's able to... Uh, Probably, definitely going to be uh, most matches the fastest player on that field. And I think that's probably going to be the case today. But Florida Southern has done a good job to contain her and limit her so far today. Yeah, Penny Baker is enjoying a good season so far here for the Spartans. She is, sec she is tied for second on the team with six assists. So that speed of hers has been able to help the Spartans offense lead to goals. As you can see, a very unselfish player with those assists. So we'll see if she's able to, with Gabby Russo on the other side, we'll see how that will make the other team adjust. They have speed on both sides. So we'll see how Florida Southern plays here. Penny Baker, a senior from Indianapolis, Indiana. She uh, actually has another year of eligibility remaining as she redshirted last season. So that Tampa is expecting to have her for one more year as it is uh, Lauren Moore as well. as number 14 with a shot and that goes high. Um, had a, a pair battling for it in the pack. Ball came out to number 14, Izzy Lloyd, who uh, quickly fired the ball high over the Spartan goal there. That was uh, definitely another uh, opportunity there for the Moccasins, though the shot sailed high. A uh, pair of shots for both teams. Both teams with one shot on goal so far, uh, equally uh, with one save. A uh, pair of fouls, uh, t Florida Southern leads... Uh, Tampa with three to one on corner kicks. So a fairly evenly played game here. I think possession's probably been about 50-50. Shields into Penny Baker in the middle. She turns. Nobody on her, but she's got two people in front of her. Tries to get it to Russo, and that's uh, knocked, o knocked o back. Uh, Florida Southern with control here. We see that we're gonna have a pretty aggressive game here today as the refs are letting them play on. So. A lot of hustle very, by uh, hustle, yep. Florida Southern. Definitely looks that to be very organized. They're always uh, seem to be in the in the right defensive position so far. As the game plays out, we'll see how uh, the coaches and players adjust to that on both sides. As that ball's played into Martin, who quickly kicks the ball up. It looks like she was looking for CC Gonzalez, but uh, let a little bit up and uh, Mosley played that well and came out and got that right away. So. Yeah, and the referee had the offsides flag up, so even though it's a good pass, it would have been an offsides there. Definitely have a pair of really good goalkeepers here today and uh, make it look uh, 
as you notice, Santi, the goalkeeper, a good goalkeeper, will make uh, shots look bad and uh, will make it look uh, definitely a lot easier through their play and just knowing uh, where the ball's going and where to play it and when to come forward. Uh, definitely have seen that so far by Mosley. Yeah, Mosley so far, they're enjoying a good year. In the five games she started, she's only allowed two goals in 432 minutes while collecting 18 saves for Florida Southern so far. And like you said earlier, uh, Caroline Freakyard only allowing the one goal this year. As she also has 18 saves in 526 minutes for the Spartans. So definitely two very good goalies here at Pepin Stadium. Ward with a shot there. It, went, it looks like it was just wide of the goal. Um, not much on that shot there. Uh, as uh, Mosley went out and uh, shot that for the Moccasins. I don't know if they're going to call that a, a shot on goal or not. Uh, Florida Southern now with the ball. Mid, middle of the field. Clears the ball back out. Trying to set something up here. Tampa also in the in the right spot here as that ball is into Rainbow. Broken up by Hayward. Back to Rainbow here. So back and forth here a little bit on this possession here. Is, uh, have a lot of these, uh, notice a lot of these passes are being picked off on both sides. There's anticipation on both of these teams. It looks like they are, uh, have, uh, scouted each other out well because they seem to know know what's coming up. Listening to University of Tampa Women's Lacrosse on Tampa Spart Women's Soccer on TampaSpartans.tv. Not sure where I got that from. Women's Lacrosse is way off from starting as we're going to have the first sub of the afternoon. It's going to be a moccasin sub. Be number six, Sheila Ramos, sophomore from Tampa. A lot of local kids in this game. A lot of players who have grown up playing against each other, with each other. Uh, definitely know each other's style as the UT marketing staff on, uh, on hand here, throwing out some shirts as the crowd roars for uh, that first giveaway. Definitely a lot of excitement here at Pepin Stadium today for this nationally ranked showdown. A pair of really good teams here in action today. 0-0 zero, zero score. We're uh, just under 25 minutes remaining in the first half here from Pepin Stadium. First of two as uh, Tampa and Florida Southern will do battle in the men's game at 7 o'clock uh, to uh, conference rivals. Sun long time Sunshine State Conference schools who have both uh, excelled uh, in uh, playing fields in several different sports as Penny Baker has the ball back to Russo. She's well defended. Back to Kaylee Ward. Kaylee Ward, a defender, coming up to, uh, to play some offense. She was a forward last year, so Ward's played a little bit of uh, everything. Ball played out, uh, picked up by uh, Florida Southern. Get the ball back right to Gabby Russo. See if she can set something up. Looking for Penny Baker. Penny Baker broke the other direction. A little bit of a mix up there. As uh, the two sort that out, we're going to have a goal kick here by the Moccasins. <coughs> Busy weekend for UT uh, Volleyball as the number one ranked team in the nation will be back in action on Friday against SSC opponent St. Leo at 7 p.m. And another SSC matchup on Saturday with Florida Southern at 4 o'clock. Yeah, big weekend there for the Tampa volleyball team. Two very good conference opponents. St. Leo's 5-2 and two on the year. And Florida Southern, they do have three losses, but all three of those losses came at that Colorado premiere. And they did take Concordia St. Paul to five sets. So, big weekend coming up for the Spartans volleyball program. Tampa with a 37 mat game uh, SSC winning streak. They've been undefeated in the SSC for two years straight, looking to make it a third. And uh, when you have that number one ranking in the nation, you have uh, the target on their back is is big. I don't know if they can get much bigger since they've dominated the last few years, but uh, St. Leo and Florida Southern, both programs that are capable of pulling that upset. So we encourage you to tune in, or if you're in the area, come out and watch it. Yeah, and the St. Leo team, the last team to win the conference title, they had they shared the title with 
Tampa back in 2009, and that was the uh, last time any other team besides Tampa has had at least a share of the conference title. That ball here by Fright Guard kicked over to Russo, middle of the field. 22-15 showing on the clock here at Pepin Stadium. As played in by Moore. She was looking for Chelsea Martin. Was broken up by the Moccasins. Midfield here by with number 14, Izzy Lloyd. Over to CeCe Gonzalez as uh, Lloyd comes up behind her and uh, is going to be called for a foul there. Like She may definitely make contact with Gonzalez as she was attempting to get that. But aggressive play here by the Moccasins. That's a... Uh, that's what they need to do. Um, definitely want to slow down the Spartans. The Spartans like to run. They like the fast-paced style here. And uh, Florida Southern doing a good job to limit that. And the aggressiveness is a, the number one way they're able to do that. And they're certainly doing an excellent job of doing that. Midfield here. But number three, Cox with the ball. Back to Martin picking it up. Over to CeCe Gonzalez. One of three Gonzalez's on the Spartan roster. Cece and her sister Miranda Gonzalez, and also senior Ariel Gonzalez, who is no relation to the pair. Well, Shields led Penny Baker a little too far there, and be picked up by Mosley. Right, the uh, almost uh, 25 minutes into this half, we'll start to see the conditioning now and how that takes effect. Uh, I would assume uh, this far into the season, and with how hot it's been in Florida that both teams are very well conditioned and uh, today the conditioning may not take much of a toll on them being a little cooler than normal number two with the ball is broken up there she was nearing the the box played out from Cox to uh, Gabby Russo Russo guarded by Montgomery Russo turns the corner and goes past Montgomery still has Newstrup in front Newstrup's gonna break that pass up so some of these scripted passes here, the moccasins are uh, basically just, just in the way of. And that's what they've been doing well with. And good play by two freshmen. Miranda Gonzalez and Madison Cox to anticipate the pass from Florida Southern and cut it off. Gonzalez with a header and uh, Guida stood her ground there as uh, Gonzalez led into it. That ball there tried to get a header, but uh, Guida was right there and... Uh, was not going to let the prolific scorer uh, notch another goal as CC Gonzalez has just been dominant this season. Junior from Tampa is definitely she's one of the best players in the nation. Leads the nation in game-winning goals, among the leaders in goals per game and goals. As Tampa with the ball here, you can see the play here from Pepin Stadium. Clouds uh, beginning to pick up a little bit. Rain is uh, definitely in the forecast for parts of Tampa tonight. Uh, scattered showers are expected, so we'll just hope they hold off and uh, stay away from this area. As that ball's kicked out of bounds by the moccasin goalkeeper. As both teams on the verge of starting Sunshine State Conference competition, Tampa's going to open up on Saturday at Lynn in SSC play in a 4.30 p.m. matchup. First uh, SSC home game will be October 8th against Florida Tech at 7 o'clock here at Pepin Stadium. Certainly encourage you fans, come on out and watch the Spartans. We know you're, we appreciate you listening to us today, but whenever you're in town in the area, uh, make sure you come out and watch the game. Enjoy the festivities. The UT marketing staff always on hand. A lot of giveaways as that shot there is uh, by number three, Miranda Gonzalez. Going to be picked up by Mosley, so that's going to go down as a shot on goal. The ball is played. A lot of hustle by Martin there. Ball went off of her, so it's going to be a goal kick by the Moccasins. 18 minutes in the first half remaining. Good crowd on hand for this 4.30 p.m. matchup. Weren't really sure what to expect with a lot of uh, classes, a lot of team practices going on, uh, but uh, a lot of support here today for the Spartans, and uh, a lot of uh, fans have made that trek over from Lakeland to watch play as well. So definitely good to see this uh, rivalry here. 
going on. And uh, teams are separated by about about 35 miles from Tampa to Lakeland. Make that trip down I-4. Coming for for this 4:30 game, you also beat Rush Hour too, so it's uh, definitely a benefit to come for this game because I'm sure the fans who come in for the seven o'clock men's game are going to get held up a little bit. Ball played out of bounds. They're going to say that's all for Russo. Southern is going to get a throw in. Breakdown here on shots. Tampa leads five to three on shots, three to one on shots on goal, and. Uh, so tech, uh, Florida Southern does have three to one on corners. Lloyd with a pair of shots for the Moccasins. CC Gonzalez with two for Tampa. Spartans have not allowed a goal since September 6th against Weber International. So Caroline Freitgard looking to keep her uh, streak intact of not allowing a goal. Tampa has outscored its opponents during that span, 18, uh, I'm sorry, 25 to 0. So quite impressive, averaging five goals a game, though 14 of those came against Georgia Southwestern. Santi, you were at that game, uh, just total domination. Yeah, a lot of good passing that day, just a lot of shots in the box, very good team effort against that Georgia Southwestern team. And Lauren Moore had a huge game that day as she tied the school record for most individual goals in the game. Tampa getting into the meat of its schedule here. It's definitely going to have uh, its work cut out for themselves as uh, they're, they're going to face some very tough Sunshine State Conference teams. I know Rollins is nationally ranked. Barry has been nationally ranked. Florida Southern hasn't been ranked, but they beat nationally ranked Barry by a score of 4-1. to one, So... Uh, Definitely some teams to contend with in the conference. Florida Tech always has a good defensive effort. Uh, Florida Southern, uh, sorry, they're number 22 in the nation now. And Eckerd, they've been running up some scores on some opponents this year, too, as has St. Leo with one of the most prolific scorers in the, in the nation on their roster. So definitely nobody to be taken lightly in this league. Tampa took a 2-0 uh, victory over Nova Southeastern on Saturday in a game that was was really dominated in the first half by the Spartans and the Sharks they had a number of opportunities in that second half uh, to make that more of a game so that score uh, was definitely closer than it appeared as Nova Southeastern played the Spartans tough. Florida Southern with a throw in 1440 on the clock here in the first half. Sonny what do you think we've seen so far in this game? Well, we've seen a lot of good defense so far. We've seen Tampa play some real good defense. Haven't been able to let Florida Southern take control of the ball. Offensively, it looks like Tampa's trying to stress the field out with Penny Baker and Russo. But we'll see if uh, Tampa can start getting Lauren Moore more involved into the game as she plays in the middle. Lauren Moore, one of the better players this season so far for Tampa. Haven't caught her name too much today. As it looks like Florida Southern has shut down the middle of the field and just start letting Tampa use the corners. So we'll see if uh, how Tampa adjusts. Ball was played in. They're looking for Penny Baker and a very aggressive goalkeeper. Aaron Mosley comes out and just uh, snares that ball there. Well played by Mos Mosley. I really like her uh, aggressiveness just going after the ball. She's uh plays it very well and I definitely she's going to make an, a difference in a lot of games this year. You have a good goalkeeper that's definitely a friend of the defensive unit. Florida Southern with an excellent defensive unit. Uh, as the Moccasins are going to have a free kick here. Um, just um, probably about 10, 15 yards uh, inside midfield. Be taken. Looking, see what they're going to be looking for here as they play that ball in. Looking for... Number two, Kira Rainbow, but uh, it's played out of bounds. Have a host of substitutions here for the Spartans. See who they have here going into the game. Now coming onto the field for Tampa is number eight, Jackal. Number five, Olsak. Number 21, Delgado. And number 26, Gonzalez. A quartet of substitutions for head coach Jerry Lucy. He's going to bring in number eight, Yata Jackal. 
Defender, junior from Germany. Number five, freshman Natty Olsak from Boca Raton. Number 21, Andrea Delgado, another freshman for the Spartans from South Florida. And number 26, Ariel Gonzalez, senior for the Spartans. Get some fresh legs in here for Tampa as a shot is fired by Southern that is blocked. Rainbow attempting to control it, but it's uh, taken out by Madison Cox. A pair of very impressive freshman defenders for Tampa in Madison Cox and Miranda Gonzalez. Tampa is stacked on defense for the future. Uh, definitely looking bright defensively as uh, Cox and Gonzalez are definitely... They are legit right away as freshmen. I can't imagine how much they're going to improve and how fun they're going to be able to see develop over the next four years. It's going to have a substitution here for the Moccasins. One thing I was told before the game by uh, both sides was that they're very comfortable with their starting units. They are uh, Both of them feel that they have top-notch starting units here. And uh, it was going to come down to reserves in the, this game, and uh, definitely could be the could be the uh, what happens here in this one, as it definitely was very evenly played with the starters, and we're getting into some stub subs here for the final ten minutes of the half. At eleven minutes here and counting, ball played into Diamandanis, fires the ball up, taken by Freitgard. And you said the bench coming in be a big factor today. I'm sure Coach Jerry Lucy is very confident in his his uh, reserves as 18 different Spartans have recorded a point this year. So from top to bottom, the Spartans have a lot of experience out there on the field. A lot of different players have had action, and a lot of players have contributed for this UT team. And Penny Baker still on the field for the Spartans. She normally subs out later in the half. As she is doing, a, she does a lot of running and. Uh, Definitely needs a, a breather at some point. She has not had that yet. That's interesting to see as uh, her on the field definitely changes the game altogether. That speed that she carries. Ball over here on the far side here. The Spartans going to be shot up by Delgado. Misplayed by, by Mosley, but the ball is uh, out of bounds there. Mosley went up to play that one. It looks like Penny Baker had a chance at a header and uh, went past both of them. And then Natty Olsak coming up trying to get to it. She didn't get to it in time before it went out of bounds. So it's definitely an opportunity there for the Spartans. That uh, Nothing came out of. Not going to be any shots on goal or anything out of that one. But that was definitely a chance there that they had. That ball kicked out. Gonzalez comes up with it. Back over to Olsak. Loses the ball. And it's going to be controlled by Southern. And Conti. Conti up to Bravo. Bravo around to Cox. Taylor Cox for Florida Southern. Not to be mistaken by Madison Cox for Tampa. As Shields will have the throw in here. Yeah, she's looking for Penny Baker. Gets it into the the senior. Gets the ball back to freshman Olsak. Goes around the corner. Back over to Penny Baker. Nice pass. Penny Baker looking forward to that's Audrey or that's uh, Beata Jackal midfield. Leads Penny Baker a little too far. Right idea right there, but Nudstrup is uh, stepped right in front of it. Ball played forward. Southern looking for something, but Kaylee Wartz cuts off that pass that was intended for Sheila Ramos. So ball back up as uh, Spartans have the ball. That's freshman Andrea Delgado on the far, looking to go on the far corner. Turn the corner and uh, broken up there by the Moccasins. Nice defensive play there by Florida Southern. I think Delgado thought she could get the corner there and... Uh, Got about halfway there and was cut off. Back over to Florida Southern. Rainbow with the ball. Rainbow looking to go inside, but it's right to Audrey Hayward. Back to Lauren Moore. Beata Jackal in the middle of the field looking to get over to Delgado. Delgado with a little with some space. 
to Penner, Penny Baker. Being guarded great by Guida. Guida has uh, really played excellent today. She's a freshman defender as well. So both of these teams with some good freshman defenders. Yeah, it looks like a lot of youth here. So a lot of a lot of bright futures for both sides here. You said a couple of freshmen on defense, and both teams have played defense very well this year. So I'm sure both sides are very excited with the possibilities of the future here. And Izzy Lloyd for Florida Southern. She leads the team with two shots, has definitely been all over the place. She's a freshman as well. So uh, definitely when you take over that, come in and take over a rebuilding project like Brittany Jones has done. Uh, she's in year three, and she's she's got some newcomers to really... Uh, continue building this program as she's improved it every year she's been here. So future appears bright for Florida Southern. As that ball by Moore is broken up by Florida Southern. She had hit Diamondonis who's trying to lead the rainbow there but let her a little too far. Fright guard comes out top of the box to control that. Ball over to Kaylee Ward. 6.57 in the first half remaining till halftime. We're still scoreless at Pepin Stadium. Tampa leads uh, in shots 5-4, to 3-2 to two on target. Uh, both teams with three fouls. Florida Southern with three corners compared to just one for Tampa. Spartans do have an offside call against them as well. Goalkeepers have both been excellent today for both teams. Uh, freshman fright guard for Tampa and senior Mosley. As Penny Baker out of the ball, broken up again though by Guida. Penny Baker's speed has not phased Guida today. Guida has done excellent on her. That um, speaks volumes when, as a coach, you put a freshman to defend a, a player of uh, Penny Baker's caliber. Definitely has not backfired for the Moccasins, though. Exciting game here between two uh, Sunshine State Conference teams who are going to meet again later this year in Lakeland. As Aria Gonzalez looking for Olsak. She had the middle there. And uh, it was played out there by number eight, Guida. If she would have controlled that, she could have turned and had a clear path to the goal. Uh, she was flanked on both sides, though, by Moccasins there. So a little bit of an opportunity there, if you want to call it that, Santi. Yeah, just a little bit. Coming in for Florida Southern, number 26, Benzel, for number 31, Bravo. And subbing in for Tampa is number 23, Watts, this is, uh, 16, Penny Baker. Some substitutions here as Penny Baker goes off the field. Um, interesting substitution for Florida Southern, number 26, Ricky Vetzel. She is the younger sister of Ryan Vetzel, who played his first two years of collegiate soccer at the University of Tampa before transferring to Florida Gulf Coast University to conclude his career. So the Tampa freshman from Tampa, Vetzel. As uh, I'm sure she's attended some games as a younger soccer player here at the University of Tampa to watch her brother play. Spartan's going to be called for a foul. 4-10 on the clock here in the first half from Pepin Stadium. Moccasins with the ball. With possession. Conti taking it near side. Back out. Uh, nobody was there. Audrey Hayward's the one who came away with it, but Betzel... Trying to battle for it. Uh, kicks it off of Hayward. So the Moccasins are going to have a throw in. That's in Tampa territory here. So we're going to have a throw in here. Is Betzel is in here to Demon Donis. Back out to Conti. Picked off by Aero Gonzalez. Back up to number 23 for Tampa. Just into the game. That's Hannah Watts. Anna Watts, a sophomore transfer from Louisiana Tech from Radnor, Pennsylvania. Candace Shields controls that one. The defensive unit of Tampa. They, they have the two freshmen. They also have senior Candace Shields, who has definitely enjoyed an excellent uh, Spartan career. She has a lot of playing time throughout her years here. And a great asset to this defense. As Madison Cox plays that in to Era Gonzalez, but she has two moccasins on her. It just seems like whenever Tampa has an opportunity. There's always a Florida Southern defender right there on them. Give the Moccasins credit. 2.45 left till halftime. I'm sure both teams right now, you think, Santi, are just going to try to eliminate mistakes to uh, and not try to allow uh, 
a, a quick goal before halftime. I think both would be happy to go in with a, a 0-0 tie at this point. Yeah, definitely. Both teams have played great defensively. And I'm sure going with 0-0 zero, zero at the halftime for both teams is not the worst thing to happen. So I'm sure, like you said, they're going to try to make sure that they don't give up any quick goal here in the last couple of minutes of the half. You definitely want to avoid that. Both teams uh, here is uh, probably going to play a little conservative here in the middle of the field. As Tampa has possession, Jake will in to Olsak. Olsak making the move and trying to lead Shields a little too far for the senior Spartan. As we're going to have a quick substitution here, 150 on the clock. Seven Looks like number 11 for Tampa, Tampa, which is Kayla Harmon. Sophomore from Orlando. Harmon is a defender. She's going to replace Lauren Moore, so give the Spartan captain a quick break here before halftime. Give her a breather. As we're going to have a kick here by Mosley. 129 on the clock till halftime. Jekyll with that ball midfield. Back to the Moccasins. Moccasins midfield with the ball and Kira Rainbow. Rainbow's played the entire first half for Florida Southern. As that's over to Ward, who's also been on the field all half. Back to Fright Guard. Fright Guard is, uh, looks like she's going to dribble the ball out and. One minute on the clock. On that wing here to Kayla Ward. Kayla Ward forward. Uh, going to be picked up by Florida Southern. So these teams, it looks like they're just going to ride it out, Santi, to uh, uh, halftime here. Just smart by both teams here. Right. I mean, in, in my opinion, it is, just so you don't take a chance of being overly aggressive and give up that one goal, which one goal in the, this game so far might be the difference. Very yeah. likely on that one. 25 seconds and ticking until halftime. Madison Cox with the ball. She's going to go forward, try to... Find her teammate Watts went a little too far. Mosley's going to come out and play it. Mosley holds possession. Ten seconds on the clock. We're going to go to halftime scoreless here at Pepin Stadium. As you hear the countdown by the voice of the Spartans, Greg Bowdler. And that will do it for the first half. We're going to head to halftime 0-0 between number 13 Tampa and number 22 Florida Southern. A pair of nationally ranked opponents. Uh... Didn't let anybody down with their performances so far. We'll see if we'll see some offense in the second half. We're going to take a break, fans. We have um, asked you to stay on. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, Fifteen minutes from now, we'll uh, begin with the second half.
All right, fans, welcome back. After a scoreless first half here at Pepin Stadium between number 13, Tampa, and number 22, Florida Southern, we're ready to do it again for another 45 minutes here. It was a very well, uh, I would say, a defensive battle in the first half. Uh, shots, Tampa led the way with five compared to four for Florida Southern. Uh, three to two in shots on goal for the Spartans. Uh, corners were 3-1 in favor of the visitors, Florida Southern. So the teams have cleared their huddles, and we're ready to begin the second half here at Pepin Stadium. Sonny, uh, Santi, what do you uh, see in the first half? Well, in the first half, we saw a great defensive effort by both sides. We saw the offense just kind of struggling to get something going, especially from Florida Southern side. It seemed like Tampa was able to take possession away a lot, but at the same time, Florida Southern was also able to take possession from Tampa. So we're hoping to see, see how the offense is adjust here in the second half. I expect uh, a couple goals here. I expect the UCD, the UT offense, to maybe pl play more towards the middle as it seems like they're trying to stretch the field out in the first half. All right, Spartans here with the ball. Candace Shields uh, leads the ball up to Martin. Martin uh, had the court. She broke. Uh, was broken up here by number nine, Conti. Conti clears that ball back, and Florida Southern's going to get possession here with number 24, Alex Daly. Though it's picked off by Russo. Russo's going to turn the corner with Daly uh, behind her. Daly catches up and breaks that one up. Going to be Spartan ball on a throw in here. Spartans with the ball here at number three, Miranda Gonzalez, looking to go into Penny Baker. Uh, picked off there by number six, Sheila Ramos. Back up to Russo. Russo looking to go to the right. Uh, quickly met by number ten, Sydney Montgomery. Uh, Spartans there with the ball and a quick kick by number three, Madison, or uh, I'm sorry, that is uh, Miranda Gonzalez, and that ball goes high over the net. So she got made good contact with it, but it sail, sailed high there. So it'll go down as a shot. As uh, Florida Southern here with a goal kick from senior Aaron Mosley from Jacksonville, Florida. That ball out. It's uh, going to be played by Kaylee Ward for the Spartans. Has it midfield. Guarded by Daly. Back up. Kind of a lot of back and forth still in this game here. Somebody, one of these teams, looking for the break. And uh, hasn't happened yet. Um, there's been, uh, each team has had opportunities. Uh, not sure any of them have been really close to coming to fruition and getting any goals here out of it, though. As uh, the defenses have been stellar. As Tampa. Tampa with the ball here. Hayward up to Shields. Shields trying to catch Gonzalez, but broken up by Florida Southern, though it goes out of bounds. Tampa will have a throw in. Candace Shields up for the throw in here. Stands midway between midfield and the moccasin goal. Ball kicked up. Looking for Russo, but uh, with a little behind her. Sydney Montgomery for the mocks comes up with it. Gets it out to midfield where it's played by Miranda Gonzalez. Back to Shields. Shields looks forward to Chelsea Martin. Martin near the Tampa bench. Yeah, she gets that ball back to Shields. And back to Martin. Inside to CeCe Gonzalez. She's uh, had her eyes set on Chelsea Martin. Held the ball instead as Martin was guarded fairly well. Moccasin defense has been in the right place at the right time. As has a Spartan defense. It's been the story of this game here. Well played game, uh, looking more and more like one goal may make the difference in this one, as we're still scoreless, as we're just beginning the second half here, we've got 41-30 remaining on the clock here, as we're waiting on a Tampa throw in, number four Candace Shields with the ball. Uh, welcome Jack Ike here, the voice of uh, Tampa Spartan soccer for this game here. A little traffic trouble. <laughs> coming from uh, coming from work with uh, it's 
dirty game here, throwing, throwing things off. We uh, thank Santi Lopez for uh, filling in. Santi's a regular at all the games and uh, able to provide his expertise for the first half until Jack was able to get here. Got a close one here, Jack. Uh, not many opportunities, a lot of defensive play. Uh, Tampa with a lot of speed on its front. Uh, Florida Southern has been very good defensively against them. Well, something's got to give in a game like this. Both teams 6-0-1. Yeah, both teams unbeaten. Uh, if I guess with a, if they tie, then they're both still going to remain unbeaten. <laughs> yeah. so. That's the thing about soccer. <laughs> yeah. you, you could normally set a game up like this and say someone will fall from the ranks, but yeah. not in soccer, you don't know. Yeah, you never know, and the way this one's going, I've, I've been very impressed with Florida Southern's defense. I know Amber Pennybaker, I, I haven't seen many players faster than her, but Florida Southern has always had someone on her, been guarded. Uh, they put a freshman on her in the first half, Juliana Guida, and she did excellent against her. Uh, can't give her enough credit for the work she's done. The back lines, both back lines, are um, seem to be anchored by young freshmen, which uh, says a lot for the future of both of these programs. That ball's played out of bounds here, and uh, yep, so we are. Looks like Tampa has drawn a corner kick there, as uh, Ward and number 11 Nudstrup were going for the ball, and. Uh, they said it was off of Nudstrup. So Tampa's going to get, uh, this is just its second corner of the day. Going to be taken by freshman Miranda Gonzalez. Spartans setting up far side with Penny Baker uh, mid-goal here. We'll see if she breaks towards it or what they try to do. And they're going to the middle. And three mocks there, uh, quickly uh, finding that ball there. In two, Gonzalez, and that one is deflected. Kick that one deflected off Nudstrup out of bounds behind the line. So we're going to have another corner here. You know, it's a great great way to set it up. You know, that like, it, it all depends on how far you kick the ball on these corners. Uh, with the men's game last week, sometimes they kicked it too far. That was a nice move. Had an opportunity, number 10, oh. uh, Madison Cox just over the net. That is uh, probably the closest we've had to a goal today as uh, that ball kind of played out right to Cox, and she went high, and... Uh, it was just a tad too high, maybe <laughs> less than a foot there on that yeah, one. That one was close. Almost hit the crossbar. So that's an opportunity for the Spartans. You know, the Spartans came in averaging almost 30 shots a game, and they have six right now. So yeah. Tampa's getting at, um, alluded to earlier. They're getting into the meat of their schedule. They yeah. had some... Yeah. Uh, Games against non-Division II teams, a uh, game where they really racked it up against Georgia Southwestern. Right. Uh, they're getting into some games now where they're, they're going to be challenged. And uh, it's interesting to see how the Spartans respond to this. Um, in the past, they've done great against it. Uh, they've definitely established themselves as one of the best in the, the league and the nation. So we'll see how Tampa responds to it this year as... Um, this may be considered the first true test of the year, although they did have a tie against Tusculum. You know, I looked at common opponents, both the these teams. The ball comes back to number five, and the quick shot yeah. goes high. Uh, Spartans trying to clear that back to Shields, but it ended up in with Lagoa, so uh, quickly fired, and it just went high of the goal there. So Both teams played Weber International earlier this year. Both teams beat Weber International. 2-1, to one, the Spartans were winners here. 4 to nothing. Uh, uh, Florida Southern Mox won that game. So that's the only common opponent You know when you try to look for something. Interestingly, uh, these guys had a uh, Florida Southern had a game canceled due to weather. Not able to play that one. Spartans have had a few lightning delays during the year, but nothing's been canceled yet. I think uh, this time of year, Jack, in Florida, <laughs> I think the lightning will <laughs> back to life. <laughs> be lucky if we escape without any at this time. As we're, we're starting to get into the season, though, where I think we're going to have less and less of those. As Chelsea oh, Martin breaks life. free, uh, looking for Penny Baker, and another opportunity there. It looks like Penny Baker could have went to her left. She, she has it again, and oh, cross hit the crossbar and came down. That was another close one. A little sloppy defensive effort here by Florida Southern, and uh, Penny Baker nearly found the goal Dodged there. Dodged a bullet there, and, Florida uh, Southern did. That was about as close as you can <laughs> get. It hit the bottom part yeah. of the crossbar, <laughs> bounced straight down, down hit the goal line, or and just, hit, I'd say, the inside inclined. part of the line. Yeah. That was about as close to a goal you can have without actually scoring that goal. <laughs> wow, that, um, and there we a little contact there. Push. So. 
Tampa's offense, they've shown a couple of uh, opportunities this half, so it's interesting to um, be interesting to see, Jack, if uh, Florida Southern is able to um, put a stop to that or if Tampa's able to build some momentum off of this. 35-45 left in the second half. 0-0 zero, zero score here from Pepin Stadium. You're a natural at this. I'm You're working on it. It's actually the first time I ever broadcasted a soccer game, so but I've been to a lot of them. Well, kicked uh, by Madison or Miranda Gonzalez. Got a lot of Gonzalez's on uh, Tampa's roster. <laughs> three have already played. Yep. Yep. Ariel, not a starter, but she's a, a senior captain who found her way on the field uh, late in the half. Depth is going to be key, and depth might be the deciding factor here in this game, Jack. You know, fortunately, in a game like today, some of the men's game, you know, the men started off the season with seven consecutive home games, so they had a very, a lot of home cooking. But a couple of those games were played on middle of the afternoon on weekends, and that, in both cases, I remember nearly a cloud in the sky, and uh, they were just baking. Now, on a day like this, uh, with the men's game, it was like 90 and 89. It's it's probably 80 today, but there's a nice breeze and it's overcast. So it's not going to be quite, take quite as physical toll on the players, but it's still going to take a toll. That's uh, one thing we noticed with Amber Penny Baker. She didn't sub out in the first half until there were about eight minutes left in the half. Mm -hmm. Normally, she is winded. Yeah. But uh, she also has a lot more breakaways usually, and Florida True. Southern really limited those in the first half. Nice. And there's a shot there by Shields. And... Uh, Came out by Mosley. Mosley is an uh, excellent uh, goalkeeper for Florida Southern. She seems to be in the right position yep. at the right times. And uh, she shows some aggressiveness coming out of the box to, to play that, them. And uh, she's definitely aided by a good defense as well. So There's seems similar in a lot of ways with their defensive uh, units and uh, goalkeepers. As Florida Southern with the ball there looking for somebody. And that's played out of bounds there. It's like they were looking for number 24, Alex Daly. Yep, they wanted to cross. Number three, Taylor Cox. And uh, all kind of sailed on it with the way, uh, way the wind is blowing. It's Should've blowing back uh, north to south. <laughs> yeah. and it blew the other way. So she definitely um, she got it's... that off the, off the side of her foot the wrong yeah, direction. Just it looks mishit like. it. Which happens. Yep. See that happen a lot here in the game with that ball's moving fast and you got people moving at you and around you. And you know, it's hard enough to hit a golf ball when it's not moving. <laughs> no, kick another ball that's moving and, yeah. and make it perfect. It takes a lot of coordination when you're going after those moving objects. <laughs> As Madison Cox here with the ball. She's taken off over nice to pass. Gabby Russo. Russo with the ball. She defended, goes left. Looking to go back to her right, and it's cut off by Montgomery. One move too many. Looks like uh, another thing we've noticed is that there's been good scouting on both sides. Yeah. Like they know how each other play. Uh, you can tell they've watched each other play already, yeah. and they uh, have the ability to scout out an opponent. You know, technically it's a non-conference game, but these teams are well aware yeah. of each other. Yep. So we got a sub here for uh, Florida Southern, uh, number 31, Abby Bravo. She uh, started the game, and she's coming off the bench now. She's a freshman from Clearwater, so she went to high school just across the street at Tampa Prep. Okay. So she's local, and uh, there's another shot there uh, by CeCe Gonzalez, and that looks like that was blocked by Jackie Metz. Give him that she corner kick. She took the pass from uh, Penny Baker and uh, quickly turned and fired, and uh, Metz uh, played that one well because uh, Russo had that opportunity there. You know, with these two schools being so close to each other, you look at the rosters, and they really recruit both the, the Tampa, the major Tampa area well. Yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of players who, who know each other, have played together, played against each other, as that corner goes inside uh, uh, over uh, Cox's reach there as she's trying to get to it. Though CeCe Gonzalez controls it, and... Uh, She's played their flank by number nine, uh, Gianna Conti, junior from Orange Park, Florida. A lot of Florida natives, a lot of local ones, and sure, there's there's girls out here I bet who have been playing it, playing with each other their entire <laughs> soccer careers. So, you know, the one thing you don't see a lot of on the Florida Southern team is the an international flavor, which we've seen from other teams. They have one player from Sweden and another player from England, and that's it. Yeah. 
Tampa not with a, a lot either, though the goalkeeper, uh, midfielder Jackal, is a free national. Uh, so they have a, have a couple, but not too many, as that ball is headed out of the way by Florida Southern. Though Russo controls it and goes back Ooh. into Gonzalez, but it's over her head. Another opportunity. That ball plays a little lower to Gonzalez, and she has a header with a yep. that's clearly directed towards the goal. She was probably about five feet in front of that moccasin goal. So Tampa with yet another opportunity here. And most uh, of the play has been down at the uh, at the moccasins end of the field, uh, with the uh, Spartans being the aggressors. Very little play has happened down on the Tampa out. side. Tampa with another shot. Oh, uh, more off the crossbar. Penny Baker controls. Penny Baker with a shot. That's blocked. Wow. Tampa with two chances there. And one thing I noticed after Moore's shot there, she hit it off the crossbar. Yep. The Moccasin defenders, they thought that was either going in or out of bounds because <laughs> they stopped. Yeah. They were stopped as that ricocheted off right to <laughs> Amber Penny Baker. So that was, uh, two opportunities there for Tampa. And uh, the way things are going right now, it's... um. Looking more and more likely like Tampa is um, eventually going to get that um, golden opportunity here to get that goal. So you just don't want to give up anything freak here that negates all the hard work you put in on the offensive end. Yeah, but it's, it's a game of adjustments. Uh, Florida Southern definitely a very talented team, so it's uh, liable to be in it. Another thing is Tampa needs to convert on those. Twice they, uh, now they've hit the, the one the crossbar and one an upright. Yep. They've had a uh, ball that went about a foot over the crossbar. One of those where both of these coaches definitely want to take advantage of all of their opportunities. And um, a few more opportunities this half. Um, Tampa um, up on shots now, 13-5. to five. I think uh, eight of those were in this, have been in the second <laughs> half after getting... Yeah, I think it was five, five at halftime. Five to four on <laughs> shots at halftime. Yep, so Tampa certainly getting some opportunities. Though Southern now with the ball here. Uh, 24 daily with the ball. Looks to go in. Uh, has quit two Spartans on her, though, as Madison Cox comes out of it. Back to Ramos. Ramos up. Fright guard will get to the ball before number 31, Abby Bravo. Spartans did a good job there of shadowing the Florida Southern player. They, they tried a little give and go, and once one player gave the ball up and then tried to head for the net, the Spartans stayed right with her. Didn't allow the pass back. Martin trying to get the corner. She missed it. She's trying to go back into Gonzalez, but uh, the pass was went past her to the moccasins. Tampa is uh, defensively. They're all over these moccasin right. uh, attackers here. Um, not letting them get much going here. They're, they're physical play, aggressive play. Uh, we'll see uh, Florida Southern's eventually able to get that opportunity. Madison Cox uh, plays that ball off her head and uh, jockeying for the ball there. Looks like it's going to be played out of bounds. Florida Southern uh, is going to get a throw in here. That was dangerous there because she headed the ball, and I don't think it quite went where she wanted it to, and almost bounced right into the uh, the path of an oncoming Florida Southern player. Yeah, those are the opportunities both teams right now are hoping for in such a closely played game here between these two teams. It'll be a low scoring affair if we if we get any scoring. We're still waiting for that. We're uh, <laughs> just over 60 minutes into this one. Yeah, not much uh, offense so far, though Tampa's had some opportunities in the second half. Florida Southern had a good opportunity in the first half where Fright Guard made an outstanding diving play. You know, other than a couple games, though, the Spartans don't score a lot of goals. What they do is don't let anyone score. Yeah, the defense has been great. They uh, have a, a mixture of youth and experience back there with uh, Candace Shields being a senior anchor on that uh, defensive unit and then having some they're a really good freshman in Madison Cox and uh, Miranda Gonzalez, who were very highly recruited, chose to stay home, attend the University of Tampa, and uh, Jerry Lucy's going to reap the benefits of that for the next no three years. No doubt. Spartans have given up one goal this year, and that was back on September 6th, yeah. and it took a one win over Weber International. Shutouts. Since then, one game did end in a 0-0 draw. Is number two, Raymond, number five, and number 11, Harmon. Have some subs here for the University of Tampa. We're going to have uh, number two, Caroline, or, uh, Sarah Raymond, um, my apologies, uh, number five, Natty Olsak, and number 11, Kayla Harmon. Uh, Raymond, uh, freshman from Palm Harbor, Palm Harbor uh, University High School. She, uh, she didn't play in the first half, so... 
Jerry Lucy quickly getting some subs in here. I think one thing he's trying to do is play the fitness angle. Yeah. I think he thinks that uh, he may have worn down this Florida Southern team a little, and he may want to try to capitalize on that is what, what I see in yeah. this one. Get some fresh horses out there. Yep. And, uh, it's been a very well, foul-free game in the second half. There were a few in the first half. Yeah, a few uh, just minor fouls in the yep. first half. Not too too physical, though both teams uh, do a good job defensively of holding their ground. One thing I noticed is they, they're both in the right position at the right time. Yep. You can't really call a foul <laughs> when they're, they're just there defensively yeah. to guard it. And that's... Yep. Uh, it was certainly the case for both teams in this game so far. I mean, I've likened some of the fouls we've seen to takedowns in wrestling. Yeah. But, you know, these have been uh, all on the no. on the up and up. If you're both in the same spot, no. both trying to get the ball and you collide, that's, that's yeah. part of the game. A lot of times you get in a bad position and you try to um, regroup from that, and that's when the fouls occur. In this game, they really haven't been in bad position a lot, too much in this game here. Neither team has. As we'll see, um, see how depth plays out. I, um, Florida Southern, as we alluded to, Brittany Jones is, has really um, rebuilt this program. Um, it's her third season. It's getting better and better every year. Um, one of the things that te usually comes last in that rebuilding process is the depth. So mm -hmm. we'll see how Florida Southern gets there because they're to another uh, turning point in their program where uh, they're really um, they're competitive with anybody. You can see they're nationally ranked. Tampa's nationally ranked. Uh, it's good for the rivalry, frankly. And yeah. Tampa and Florida Southern folks don't like each other much, <laughs> but uh, it's it's excellent to have that rivalry, and that um, leads to uh, the, the school spirit and uh, <laughs> helps both both teams, both programs. And Amber Penny Baker with the ball here, up to Olsak, back to Penny Baker. Penny Baker looking to go inside to Martin. Um, be played by Florida Southern instead. That was a good cross, though. That was a good cross. Uh, moccasins, though, again, they had two people on her. They right, were uh, right. <laughs> very well played by Florida Southern. I don't know if Tampa has seen this in the last few games with uh, an organized defense that uh, has uh, played them as fierce as uh, Florida Southern has. Penny Baker with the ball again, turns the corner, and she's right, cut she's off again. Foul. They're going to call a foul there on Florida Southern. Like Guida got there a little too quick on that one there. Um, just outside the box. Lauren Moore is going to have an opportunity. She's dangerous on those free kicks. Um, she scored from them before. Uh, be surprised to see her try to bend that ball into the right. moccasin net here. Interesting to see what happens. Moccasins are setting up two on the front wall there. Off to the, to the near side for us is where the rest of the Spartans are. We'll see... Uh, Keep an eye on Penny Baker as well. See how she breaks on this. Moore's going to take this kick. It's going to go straight to Mosley. She picked up the one hopper. Did not make her move left or right at all. Other thing with uh, with these shots, though, is that y you can't give enough credit to the goalkeepers. It looks like right. it's just a shot that's right to the goalkeeper. Yep. But um, actually, it's, it's Mosley just being in the right spot yep. knowing... Um, what's going on. Exactly. That, um, knowledge is not something you, all, you always see with the awareness of uh, goalkeepers. Next pass. Passes in. Uh, Martin is going to go. They're going to call an offside oh, yeah, here. Yeah. She had, looks like that the bottom, Natty Olsack. That was Kaylee Ward with a pass into Olsack. Uh, quick turn there. She had the, nobody but the, the goalkeeper <laughs> in front of her. So another opportunity for the Spartans. The Spartans need to, need to be able to finish here. They, uh, have had some chances here. Ball back uh, to Ward, over to Olsak. Haven't been able to really get uh, Penny Baker and Russo free, which is what Tampa likes to do. Tampa likes to run. Uh, Florida Southern has limited that today. Going deep into this game scoreless. We're 21-55, left in the second half. We're halfway through the half. <laughs> Still scoreless. A number of fans on hand here. It's a good crowd today. Last couple games we've had uh, threats of rain or it's been just blazing hot. Everybody sat up in the, like, the top three rows here. At least today they're able to spread yeah. out a little. Well, I, I assume, for Jack today. <laughs> I assume they came up to hear the broadcast. Yeah, they, they want to know what's that. going on. Yeah. And have two of the best in uh, Jack Ike and Greg Praver. Apologize for... Um, 
Greg not being here yet. He's Greg's just letting academics the get in the way of his, uh, his education. Academics comes first here at the University <laughs> of Tampa. And he'll be here later for the men's game. As Cox turns and fires. Misses. Nice and save by Mosley. Another quick shot by Raymond goes off the diving uh, goalkeeper, Mosley. So Tampa with another chance. And uh, right there nearly got past her. Mosley dove for it. And it's a... Uh, it would be tough to score on most. Right, yeah, and she had the angle cut down. She only gave about three feet of the uh, the right bar, and and it was probably on within a, a foot of the bar, so she just deflected it away. Gives the Spartans a corner kick. The last couple of corner kicks have not been high up in the air. They've just been like low and just gotten up to the front person. They've not tried to pop it up over anybody and see if they could head it at that point. We have a break in play here as there's a moccasin down. Uh, trainer headed out to uh, see her. Newstrup is down. Yeah, Newstrup is down. Um, doesn't look like anything serious. May have a little cramping. Uh, as a uh, legacy promotions group is committed to bringing the hottest new events. See how this plays out. To the Tampa Bay area. Don't forget a men's game coming up after this about seven o'clock. Planning on 7 o'clock. Uh, we can have 30 minutes between games. The game, obviously. Uh, we need a Spartan goal here, so we have uh, Spartan goal. It's definitely going to start <laughs> after 7. Uh, that's, that's definitely the case. So. Spartan will have some opportunities. Lead 16 to 5 inch shots, though just 6 of those are on goal. They're 2-2 two, two for the Moccasins. Moccasins with just one shot this half. Run on goal. So Tampa has uh, definitely uh, changed the pace in the second half and uh, created some opportunities for themselves. And this is how it was in the uh, conference tournament last year when it went scoreless until uh, Florida Southern upset the Spartans in overtime with a, a golden goal to advance the conference tournament. So the uh, longer the Spartans let Florida Southern linger here, it's uh, more and more that we look at. Uh, Likely at a tie or even a loss. Then you start, uh, once, once the clock ticks down under 10, 15 minutes, then you, that, that bad play or that freak play just starts to become a little bit more uh, in everybody's minds. And Martins will get the corner kick out. Yeah, dude's dropping and helped off. Uh, she lo it doesn't look like anything serious. Uh, it looks uh, more like Sam just kind of up. She was standing, and then uh, they called the trainer in, and that's when she uh, and sat down. So, sub is coming number twenty-three, Jess Godey. Uh She's a freshman from Batavia, Ohio. So, Florida Southern roster is littered with freshmen there. A lot of youth there. As corner kick here is going to be played in, looking for Penny Baker Ooh. or Cox, and it's played instead by Mosley. Mosley came right out of the box and uh, stared that ball out of the air. It was a nice corner kick, though, because yeah. it got it above the first wave of players and gave some other ones a chance. Mosley, being the only one who can use her hands, yeah. was able to snag it out of the air, though. She has good hands and good anticipation. Uh, you're not going to see many goalies like that. It uh, looks like a handball yeah. there yeah. by Penny Baker. It's it's a obvious crazy bounce. bounce. One. Yep, bounced right up and hit her in the hand, so. And Florida Southern with the possession here, midfield. Florida Southern hasn't controlled much this half. As uh, Southern going to end up back with the ball here. Mets back over here to uh, we clear it back up to Ramos. Ramos over to Lloyd. Lloyd, the freshman, turns to fires and is quickly blocked by Lauren Moore. Back out to Natty Olsack, over to Moore, midfield. Moore looking for Penny Baker, though she's cut off. Another outstanding play by Guida. I'm impressed by Guida as a, as a defender. Uh, she's really uh, limited this part. Yeah. She's an athletic defender who uh, has real good technique. Yeah, the Spartans are going to have a substitution yeah, here. Another number 7, Lauren Cicero, in the game. Sophomore from Naperville, Illinois. Cicero is another one who didn't play in the first half. So we have two of those now. It's Cicero and Raymond for Tampa. Getting those fresh legs out there. Yep. We'll see if that makes a difference. Yep. More and more midfield. Two, it's headed out by the moccasins. Looking over there, uh, like Raymond was playing that one, was played out of bounds. That would have to throw it in near the end line. Throw in will be controlled by Kaylee Ward. Sophomore for the Spartans from St. Cloud, Florida, out of the Orlando area. Into Old 
back, back to Ward. Ward looks like she's going in and played by Rainbow. That was, <laughs> or not Rainbow, Mosley. Ball was, that's another dangerous one because it was played yeah. so close to the net with a wind blowing in that direction. And uh, I think Mosley actually had to adjust yeah. with that one. <laughs> you misplay that one and that actually yeah. bounces in for a <laughs> cheap, cheap, very goal. cheap goal yeah. in a game like this. You hate to see it decided. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But I think where Mosley initially played it isn't where she caught it. She had to come in towards the goal line. It can be tricky. I can't imagine. I haven't played yep. much soccer, but I can't imagine that's fun to, to play one yeah. like that as it's played out of bounds here. Florida Southern's going to get a throw in near the Spartan end line. And the other thing you don't want to do is, and it happens a lot in hockey, is don't give up a rebound. Now, if you've got a chance... Snag the ball and, and possess it. And we've seen a couple times, women's and men's games, the ball, you know, the, the goalie makes the save, but the rebound pops right out back into play. Yeah, good point, Jack. That's uh, definitely, uh, a d we see a deciding factor in a lot of games. Yeah. The ball here is played not, by Goaty. Not that you can in. prevent it every time, but try not to give up the rebound. Yeah. Florida Southern is a little... Uh, Making a little bit more of a play into Tampa's defense here. Yep, that's as deep Tampa's as they've defense. gotten today in this uh, second half. Yep. Not many opportunities. It results in a goal kick for Freigard, but I think that's the first time it's gone over the end line. Yep. 16.50 left uh, in the second half of play here between UT and Florida Southern. Longtime Sunshine State Conference rivals. They're both uh, powerhouses in a lot of sports. Dominate at the Division II level. Both of these programs highly respected across the nation. Ball uh, was played in and broken up by Hayward back to Shields. Shields looking midfield for Olsak. Olsak turns, looking for, uh, looks like Lauren Cicero. Up to Penny Baker and Spartans want to foul as there was some contact yep. between Penny Baker and Guida and, uh, they impeded my progress. But <laughs> yeah, it was uh, well, was a, led a little bit too far. I think um, one of those, like in the NFL, where it was, it, yeah. it's not a catchable pass. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. Regardless, I think it ends out, up uh, out of bounds there. But uh, I think they're giving the Spartans giving the, though. They did, they did the call the foul there. Free kick. So Spartans getting a free kick here um, over near their bench. Head coach Jerry Lucy down there. Uh, Telling Lauren Moore what he wants to do. It looks like he wants her to put it in the air here yep. towards the net. We'll see last if that's a false alarm or what, what the... Last time they, they were here, they had another player right next to the, the, the kicker, and they kicked it a little short. Moore, Moore's kick is nice. just high, and she's dangerous yeah. in the situation. She, she finds the goal in a lot of those, and uh, she just missed it there. And she's got the wind at her back, too, yep. going in that same direction. So. Yeah. It's worth the risk. Yep, definitely. Take that opportunity there to uh, see what happens. You never know. Florida Southern, mostly um, a little slow to get this uh, kick out here. She knows her defense may be laboring a little bit. They played a lot of minutes today. They've done excellent against the Spartans. Penny Baker turns. She has a mock in front of her to break it up as we have one moccasin down on the field here. Uh, we'll see what happens here. As, uh, we're going to see coming out to get it is Mosley. Let a little too far for Penny Baker. Uh, we're going to have a stoppage Stop in play, play as Guido was down. Guido is a freshman. She's played the entire game so far. I think it's just uh, limping in. She might have turned her yeah, ankle. Uh, um, yeah. She got kicked. Possible. Getting uh Getting worn down here a little bit. As we get into to this game, uh, the, the final ten minutes of this uh, second half here. And she's she's really laboring to walk right now. It, and she's still trying to shadow Penny Baker, so watch that, because Penny Baker's tough to guard when you're totally fit. Yeah, Queen has done excellent today, so, but uh, a little bit of an injury might And this is a breakaway opportunity for Florida Southern, number 31. Oh. Shot, it is just high by Bravo. With a great opportunity, that ball she got in front of her, it was just her and the Spartan goalkeeper. She shoots top of the key, goes just over the Spartan net. So and that's one of those that plays was an again. opportunity, yep. You just got to take advantage of whatever break you can get. There, uh, looks like we're going to call, uh, see what they have. And that ball wow. looks like they called it was uh, deflected by a Spartan. Might have been deflected on the kick by the defender. Uh, Freikard might have got uh, got a hand on it as that ball was yeah. 
a spot the touched at the, last is what goal. they're So we're going to have a, a goal kick here, or a corner kick here for Florida Southern. Played in, uh, headed out by Madison Cox. Madison Cox is a tall, lanky defender. Very fit. Comes from a cross-country track background. As That's a near foul there on Florida Southern. As that was almost a takedown on Penny Baker. Penny Baker turns over to Olsak. He played by number two, Raymond. She had a chance, but that shot was nowhere near the goal there. She played that there. a little high right there. Didn't have much time to get set basically find where she was, so she kind of pivoted and let it fly, and it was just a, as they say, high enough to, she, uh, she knew she didn't have much time, but she had a short window of time, so she yeah. turned and fired right, and it just went a little high, so one of those where it's still, uh, you have to make perfect connection with that ball, and yeah. it's, uh, it's hard to do. That ball here, right guard's going to come way out to get that <laughs> one cleared out here, uh, Played right to Florida Southern. Uh, Guida still playing on Penny Baker. Guida looks to be moving a lot better now. Yeah, definitely. 12.40 left until the uh, end of regulation. We're still scoreless. Both teams with a tie on their record this year. Tampa's lone tie was a scoreless one with Division II opponent Tusculum. Tampa has yet to allow a goal in uh, five matches now, dating back to the Weber game. Just, and that's the only goal they've given up all season. Yeah, that was September of, 6th. Uh, good defense, uh, offense that controls the ball a lot, and a good uh, goalkeeper play by Freitgard. <clears throat> Get over to Penny Baker. She's got two people behind her. Not playing her too close. Uh, she's going to try to make some moves. And uh, coming in from behind to break that one up was Rainbow. So Rainbow controls it, and Penny Baker breaks that one up from her. And we're going to have a foul on she's Penny Baker. So. We have him. Yeah, kind of hooked she, one of the players with her arm. Looks like she might have got away with one on Rainbow, and then the <laughs> second time uh, she got a little bit of a hook there on a uh, looks like Vetzel, and then she was called for that one. No major contact here. Oh, it's starting to heat up a little bit in the second half here. Gonna have a moccasin substitution. Uh, they're gonna get Guida off the field and bring in number 11, Nudstrup. So Nudstrup looks, uh, we've gotten a little bit of a breather after she was helped off. I think she, um, probably just got hydrated on the bench right. there, Jack, and yep. is uh, good to go for the final 11 14 of this game. One thing the, the mocks are going to have to weather is having Guida on, on the bench. She played uh, excellent defense against Penny Baker, and uh, they're going to need, uh, need somebody to step up in her absence. Right. Tampa's set to bring in uh, some of their uh, high-powered offensive players here. They've got Montgomery going stride for stride with her right now. We'll see if she, can, if she stays in that role or can keep up if she's in that role. So 10-38 uh, before the end of regulation. Uh, we played out of bounds here. Uh, Florida Southern's going to get a throw in. So because this is non-conference then, if it does go to overtime, it's sudden death. It's, uh, yes, it's tw two ten minutes. They're all, uh, regular season, they're, they're, all, uh, they're all sudden death. Okay. And postseason. Um, if you get in, when you get into the postseason, uh, you do a remain tied, you get into those penalty kicks. Okay. Which is, uh... Uncertain, and uh, both teams like to avoid that. Well, as they say, it's like playing a basketball game and then going to free throws at, yep. at the end of the game. Yep, definitely don't want to do that. As there's a takedown there uh, near the box there, and uh, no call there. As Florida Southern with the ball. Conti back to Rainbow. Rainbow turns, and she's tripped Trip. up. They're going to call a foul there on uh, Tulsack. The referee tells Olsak, uh, quit it. Quit it, though it wasn't nothing, <laughs> nothing, real, bad. nothing real malicious. No. <laughs> so, it's giving her a heads up. Yep. They're very clean play game, it appears, so far by both teams. Spartans with uh, four players set to check in uh, on their next throw in. As there's Rainbow's kick is high. And we're going to have a goal kick here by 
Tampa. So we're going to have uh, some players coming back in for Tampa. This could make a difference here. Yep. As uh, Rest it Among up. them are number 28, Gabby Russo, number 15, C.C. Gonzalez. Uh, looking to see the other ones here. Martin, number 12, Martin, the other wing, and uh, number 3, Miranda Gonzalez, another one of their uh, stellar defensive players. So... Rest them up. Some, yeah, they're well rested now, and they're um, now the home stretch. They have some opportunities here in the final 8:40. Right. That ball's played out of bounds by Shields, though. Tampa came out real strong to start the half, and that lasted about say, 20, 25 20, minutes. Yeah, Florida Southern has rebounded from that yep. uh, to really uh, limited Tampa. Florida Southern's had an opportunity of their own. They've leveled off the field. So they've, uh, is five, after they looking to maybe be uh, a little worn out, they've, they've bounced back yeah. very well. Still not a lot of shots for Florida Southern, just three this half. Spartans are up to 18 for the game, so they've had 13 shots this half. Yep. A couple of opportunities, uh, big opportunities for both teams so far. I'm sure both head coaches are uh, scratching their heads a little bit, just saying we gotta gotta finish those. <laughs> Still, uh, Spartans have had two balls hit the crossbars today. <laughs> yep, one that was just a little bit over the top, and that ball played in there. And Fright Guard got to it before Bravo did. So a good play by Florida Southern as they were trying to get to Bravo. Those are those plays that won't go in the book as statistically as anything for Fright Guard. It, you know, it's not a save. It wasn't a shot on goal, but those are the plays you have to make yeah. to keep your team alive. If she's just a freshman. She's done excellent for Tampa. She's uh, been a great player for the Spartans, as they're going to call a foul on Florida Southern there. So 7-10 left in the second half here from Pepin Stadium. Lights are on. Uh, there's clouds in the area. Rain in the forecast for the yep. Tampa Bay area, though that doesn't always mean that it's going to be raining <laughs> on you. On yep. you, as it's raining somewhere. Yeah. Is basically what they're saying. <laughs> so, the chance we may not get any. Let's hope that's the case. Yeah. We'll be here for one more. Jack Eich will be here with Greg Praver for game two of the day. Um, another game between uh, Tampa and Florida Southern as the men's teams will do battle. Men's, men are on a roll right now. Both uh, men's teams. Yes. Florida Southern's uh, enjoying an excellent season so far. Men lost the first game of the season to Carson Newman and uh, spotless since. Yes, they have been. They've been excellent. That Carson Newman team that was ranked number two in the nation yep. that they uh, lost to at the end of the year. Tampa putting a lot of new pieces on the team. Uh, still learning to play t together as a team and uh, with their new teammates. Doing better every game. But they were uh, recognized in the polls this week after uh, coming up with win after win after win. Yep. They finally... Uh, 21st, is it? 21st in the nation, similar to uh, Florida Southern's women just getting recognized at number 22. So breaking into that poll and uh, gives, a, gives a team an added boost of mm -hmm. confidence. Uh, know that they're definitely getting that respect, but uh, it puts a little bit more of a target on your back, though. It does. So that's why you want to play a team that's ranked right about where you are. Takes the target away if you're and, uh, equal. <laughs> the Spartan men, there is a real, uh, could be a tricky game for them with um, nationally ranked Lynn and St. Leo coming up. Right. Uh, definitely cannot afford to overlook Florida Southern and lose this one, uh, the men's case, yes. because they have two tough ones ahead of them, so... Um, speaking to head coach Adrian Bush, he's really concerned. He wants his guys to focus on Florida Southern and okay. focus on a team that could definitely uh, give them a run for their money and could very easily come out with a critical South Region victory. And that will be the seventh of seven consecutive home games for the men. <laughs> yep, it was uh, definitely a um, lot of home games for the Tampa men this year. A lot of those... Uh, we have home and home series right. with some teams like Clayton State, who uh, Montevallo. Um, this just happened to fall on that year where yep. it's, it's at Tampa. The men playing a very tough schedule this year with uh, several uh, national, regionally ranked teams. They just beat number 21 West Alabama. Uh, they're ready to go against these uh, top teams in the nation. 4:20 left until uh, end of regulation. Florida Southern with a kick here. Just inside midfield. Going to have Conti going in, headed out by Madison Cox. 
Up to Penny Baker. Penny, feel, Penny Baker with a yep. lot of field there in front of her. She's looking to CeCe Gonzalez. Gonzalez has a explosive Ryan players. in front of her. Gonzalez moves, looks to go to her right. Broke up by, that's Goaty, freshman from Batavia, Ohio. I tell you, they play good defense. They aren't falling for any fakes. And Gonzalez and Penny Baker are very good at uh, shifty moves, and nobody's falling for them. They're also, uh, they're forcing Tampa to the left. They're uh, another one of those uh, things where they've scouted them out. They yep. know which way they prefer to go. Um, at this level, they're capable of going both ways, and they're gonna—they're more comfortable with them going the other direction. Well, that ball play, corner kick played in, broke up by Bravo. Bravo playing an excellent game as well. And that ball played out of bounds, thrown in by Gabby Russo. As we have our Pizza Hut giveaway by the UT marketing staff. Who can be the loudest? In case you had no. They get loud when that pizza comes, Jack. <laughs> Free food. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Ooh, nice pass. Kick there by Moore is right to the goalkeeper. That's going to go down as a shot on goal. Moore got a good foot on it, but uh, again, Mosley's right there. Yeah, didn't make her move <laughs> left or right. Yeah. Yep. Well, those, I tell you, both goalkeepers are just in the right spot at the right time all the time, it seems like. They've done good today. 240 left in regulation. 0-0. Zero, zero. Scoreless tie between these uh, two Sunshine State Conference opponents, though this is a non-conference game today. Uh, it is a very meaningful, though, because it's an in-region game, mm -hmm. where Division II South Region is uh, huge for both teams. Six teams will get into the NCAA tournament, and uh, definitely a win or even a tie in a game like this, depending on your outcome in your season, could go a long way to securing those spots. Got a figure two with Florida Southern just playing Tampa close here. It's right. uh, going to be a confidence boost, especially with yeah. the number of freshmen they Young have team. out there on the field. Yeah. They see they can play with one of the nation's premier teams. And they play again here in Lakeland later on this year. It's going to be on October 14th. Hope to see a lot of Spartan fans making that short trip over. 145 left in uh, regulation. Penny Baker winning the race to that ball, but she's... Got to go one on five right now. Yep. Gets the ball in, and it's blocked out of bounds. Uh, Tampa's going to get, a corner, get a corner kick. That's a good move. Penny Baker's lost many races? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nope. Although, uh, they've, uh, Guida in particular has stayed right with her, stride for stride, several times today. So Can't say enough about the effort by the Moccasin defenders. Corner kick here for the Spartans. Goes in, header wow. is high by Gonzalez. That Excellent corner Gonzalez. kick. That's exactly what you want to have happen on that play. Curve that ball right in towards the moccasin goal, and it's it's kind of Give free yourself for the header. to head that ball yeah. in. And uh, Gonzalez um, sent it going a little too high there. But uh, dangerous opportunity there for uh, Tampa. 45 seconds left. As we have uh, Florida Southern with numbers. Lagoas, so uh, it's broken up by Madison Cox. Back out to Ward. She's got to kick the ball back to Russo. Near midfield, Russo's looking into Gonzalez. Cut off by Montgomery. Montgomery over to Rainbow. Rainbow trying to get a uh, streaking Bravo, though Candace Shields uh, is on the side of the ball there. Shields will play the ball out. We're going to have a throw in for the Moccasins. 20 seconds on the clock. They're going to have to 15. pick it up if they want to get a one last shot. Uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, uh, inside 10 That'll seconds, we have a goal kick for the Spartans. We're going to extras here yep. And, uh, yep. at Pepin Three, Stadium as two, Greg Bowdler counts one. it down. All right, for overtime. Through 90 minutes, and we've yet to have a goal. That means free soccer for all you fans out there. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in uh, about four and a half minutes here for the start of the first overtime period here at uh, Pepin Stadium.
Alright, welcome back fans. We're here at Pepin Stadium. Jack Ike, Tom Colby here for uh, um, extra soccer time here. We, it could be 20 minutes, it could be fairly Second. quick here. <laughs> so, sudden death here with uh, Tampa quickly uh, controlling the ball here. They switch ends of the field. The t Spartans are now going right to left or south to north. Midfield here. Uh, see how Florida Southern plays this. Gabby uh, Rousseau turns the corner. Got a oh, nice cross! In. Great cross there to Chelsea Martin, but uh, kind of sailed uh, past Martin's head there. Another great opportunity uh, created by Gabby Russo. Yep. He really played that excellently, and uh, senior for the Spartans. Just is, uh, keep giving your team opportunities. Yep. Eventually, it's going to benefit from it. Headed by Shields. Going to be back to the Mox. Out of bounds. Mox with another throw in. The clock ticks here in overtime. We have two of them, if need be. I think we won't need them both. I, I don't think we're going to use all 20. Okay. <laughs> Jack Hike with the prediction. prediction. We'll see here. I don't try not to make predictions. It's not like I'm going out on a limb. I made a prediction to my co-workers today on the outcome of this game. I'm not going to say who okay. I picked, but I will tell you that I was significantly off on it. So. <laughs> See, I didn't pick who was going to win. I don't want to offend anybody. Don't you want to? <laughs> so I'll just say that I picked somebody to win by more than more than one. I thought it's, they would. It's yeah, not going to be. <laughs> not not going to happen. One. Nope. And at least one.